Today we have Marcella Naret, my cousin, who was studying abroad at Florida State University in Spain. So she just made it back to the country uh, as coronavirus was breaking out there. We're here to interview her and talk to her about how it was being in the country, how her situation changed from one day to the next, and how she made it back to the US. Marcella, thanks for joining us. Mm, of course. Thank you for having me. So I guess like most of the world, this kind of changed very quickly from one day to the next. Um, about a week ago, 10 days ago, everything seemed to be sort of under control and then everyone's lives was kind of thrown into a panic. So walk me through where you were about a week ago uh, in Spain, where you were in Spain, what the situation was like, if you had heard anything from your study abroad program, what they were telling you guys, and then kind of walk me through how that very quickly changed. Yeah, so like you said, it was kind of from like a one day to the next type thing. We had a meeting with our um, school and they had told us that we were allowed to stay. Um, but like if we wanted to go back home, we were able to do that too and just take our classes online. And, um, and then the next day everything changed because our um, Spain became a level three. And then we had another meeting and they told us basically that we had to go home. Um, and stuff and kind of just that there would be no financial um, compensation for our flights and stuff. Um, they told us and then they told us that that day that Spain was in a state of emergency and that all like the restaurants were closing, you know, everything except for the supermarkets and pharmacies. Um, so it was pretty abrupt. So we kind of just had to pick up and leave by the end of the weekend. And they had also canceled like Fias that was going on there too. Um, so that was kind of an indicator that things were gonna go down. And so you were you were in Valencia and um, I had heard that a lot of your classmates had started to leave before you. So what was going through your mind as, as some of your classmates started to leave and you're still there? Um, I know you also mentioned that FSU said that they were not going to help pay for the flights. We've been reading and seeing here in the US that some flights from Europe to the US were thousands of dollars. So um, what started to go through your head when you started to see your classmates leave and you were still there trying to work out your own situation? I started getting really nervous because um, we heard that they might close the borders. And so I thought that I wouldn't be able to get back home. Um, but uh, like, and it was also really hard. The flights, like you said, were very expensive um, to get home. It was hard to find like a reasonable price to get home. And my connection was through Madrid. So I had to get through Madrid. And when I got there, it, there were like no taxis. There were hardly any like people out because the city was closed. So it was really hard to get to the airport from there. Um, so how, how did you do that? How did you get to the airport once you got to Madrid? Well, when I got to Madrid, I took a bus there. So when I got there, um, I was just walking in a direction. I was trying to find a main road to see because there were a couple cars out, but not many. So I was just walking. I, it took me 25, 30 minutes to find a taxi to get to the airport. And was, were you by yourself at this point or was there anyone else in your program who decided, hey, maybe we should travel in a group? Was it you know, an FSU staff member or was it sort of yeah. FSU to tell you guys every man for themselves, you know, you got to find your own way back? Yeah, it was kind of like that. I mean, a lot of people tried to travel together, but depending on like how expensive it was or not, um, I don't know, but I traveled by myself. I just took a bus there, but I had a lot of friends who had like the same flights going back to the States, so. So when you got to the airport, uh, you board the plane, you come to the United States. Was there any point um, even being at the airport? We've seen how the, the airports have been chaotic over here. How chaotic was it over there? Once you got to the airport, did you ever think for a chance, you know, maybe I won't be able to get on this flight back home? You know, there's just so much chaos. What was, what was like the atmosphere in the airport over there? Um, actually, it was pretty normal when I got inside the airport. There wasn't a lot of like chaos. It was just like everybody had masks on, like a lot of people had masks on um, and gloves. But other than that, it was just very busy. But I wouldn't say that um, it was in a state of chaos. And then when you got, uh, you had to transfer through Chicago, if I have that correctly, and, and we saw in the news how chaotic that was people waiting in line for six seven eight hours to go through customs uh, was that your experience and if not or if it was your experience I guess talk to us a little bit about um, how it was getting to Chicago how long you had to wait um, you know the connection everything going through customs there were they screening people were they 
looking at people who had coronavirus symptoms? What was that like? Um, it was a long process. It wasn't seven or eight hours. I had heard the day before it was like that, but they had switched um, the way they were doing it, I guess. So it only took about two and a half hours to get through it, but it was still very long. Um, and I almost missed my flight. I like I left my bags and I just went to my flight because I had to change terminals and I didn't have enough time, but it took like an hour and hour to get through passport control. And then we did a coronavirus screening where they just kind of took our temperature and then told us about um, like a two week quarantine. Um, even in the line, they were handing out like little snacks and water because it was so long that, I don't know, they were feeding us and hydrating us, right. I guess. And so the, the, the coronavirus screening, it was just a temperature. And then I guess if you, if you had a high temperature to them, they were mm -hmm. telling those people to go in one line. And then if you were fine, they were just saying, hey, you know, you should probably stay home for two weeks. That's, that's all they were doing. Yeah. They had like a little checklist that said like, if we looked well or if we looked ill and then they just took our temperature and if it was normal, then they just told us um, to stay quarantined for about two weeks and then take our temperature twice a day. I'm curious about, uh, I guess, FSU's um, role in this entire process. Did you have at any point, um, you know, I know you said they didn't kind of go along with you. They sort of said every man for themselves to get back to the United States, but did they ever at any point say, you know, here's a staff member you can call if you need assistance. I mean, I know you speak Spanish, for example, but mm -hmm. I'm sure some of your classmates who were studying abroad didn't have a great command of the language. So they're just kind of thrown in this foreign country where they were studying abroad. I mean, what sort of resources, if any, were available to you guys if you had any questions, if you had any struggles? I mean, were there any at all? I mean, they just said basically that we could email them or call them. And then downstairs we had a reception um, person who would help us like calling us a taxi company. But other than that, not much else. They kind of said that at some point they wouldn't be able to come into work or to like take us to the doctor if we were sick. So they kind of just were like, you were on your own um, from now on. And what about the situation now that you're back home? I mean, uh, presumably you had about a month and a half left of the semester. Mm -hmm. um, are you still able to finish those study abroad classes online? Um, will you be able to finish those classes for the semester? And, and how have the academics been um, transitioning from in-person in Spain to now doing them online in your, in your home? Yeah, um, so they just transitioned to all of them online. And it's been a simple transition. Like they've just been messaging us and they've been very lenient with um, our like uh, assignments um, and very like caring for like the situation that's been going on recently. Um, at least the majority of my teachers have been, some of them haven't, but um, overall it's been an easy process to change from in-person to online classes. I guess being in a country that they say, you know, Spain, like Italy, like other countries in Europe are a couple of weeks ahead of the United States with all the chaos. You, you talked about how empty the streets were, restaurants being closed. As someone who was able to see that situation escalate very quickly from one day to the next, my final question is, what's your message to um, people here in the United States who have been trying to follow along, trying to pay attention, but really they can't relate because they haven't seen it yet? W what would you warn them of? What would you describe them of, of what it's like in Europe and what could be coming here to the United States if coronavirus doesn't get under control? I would say that it honestly just turns from a normal day into like empty streets and everything closing and it kind of went, went really fast. Like you didn't realize it, like everything was normal one day and then the next everything was completely different. And I would advise people to um, at least quarantine for the next two weeks um, and stay safe. Actually on that question, I, I do have another question for you. Did, I, did everyone from your, have you heard of anyone in your program? There's some other schools in Florida where it's been reported that some students who were studying abroad got coronavirus. As far as you know right now, um, is everyone in your program Fine. Has anyone contracted the virus? Has anyone been tested for it? Um, everybody in my program was completely fine. Nobody was affected by the coronavirus. Well, keep us posted if that changes. Uh, thanks for joining us. And um, we hope you are able to finish the semester pretty, pretty well, pretty easily without any more coronavirus drama. So thank you. Thank you. How's it going?
I'm Eduardo Noret with Campus Reform. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to subscribe to get our latest content, click right here. If you're interested in joining our team as a correspondent or an investigator, click there. And if you want to donate to make sure we can create more great content like this, click right here.